Scream Queens, Season 1, Episode 9. Ep this episode is called Ghost Story. So, spoilers for these first nine episodes, and yet again, I absolutely love this episode. So, let's dive right in. Yeah, the... the Boone is still running around posing as Joaquin Phoenix, and it's still working. Gladiator! Uh, are you not entertained? Does he know that that's not Joaquin Phoenix's line? That's Russell Crowe's line? Anyway. Um, <laughs> and, and the, the, yeah, um, Chanel number... Oh, it does not. Yeah, yeah. Chanel number three spots him. You know, he had to take off the the beard because he spilt on it. And just their entire interaction is is really really funny. Just the you know he he pretends yeah the your boon you know but you died yeah so, so you're a ghost. Right, ghost, yes, and the bit where he just dives away, boo, and she runs off. She just, I guess, with a show called Scream Queens, you gotta make sure that the queens can scream, and boy, can they! Just with and and some amazing screams in this episode, also from them. And Chanel number one is going to be meeting. Chad's parents and his brothers Thad and Brad and you know he proposed <gasps> he got you know he got down on one knee and it's not a it's not an engagement ring it's just a it's, you know it's it's like a necklace or something and you know and the you know oh everyone who give who gets one of these you know and goes to to the or wait, yeah, everyone who goes to the the Thanksgiving ends up marrying. Except for that one girl who wasn't invited and then she hanged herself and now the house is haunted. So, you know, you'll be you'll be eating something and it turns into blood in your mouth and the furniture screams, we're gonna have a dope time. Just yeah. And you know, a toast to yeah. And <laughs> Zayde and Grace together, and I think it's, yeah, Grace says, I'm so glad neither of us have been killed, and Zayde's like, me too, that's so sweet. <laughs> and the bubble wrapped, why are we bubble wrapping everything? It is, you know, because it's so expensive, it's just, yeah, and that's, you know, because if you don't have a lot of money and you have something expensive, you're gonna bubble wrap it for safekeeping. And the the thing when you know, ah, since they don't let me carry a gun, I like to pop bubble wrap and imagine it's a gun. And they make sure to add an actual gunshot sound. Like it doesn't sound when she's when she's posing with the finger gun. It doesn't sound like bubble wrap. It sounds like someone's firing a gun. I just absolutely love it. And she doesn't just like fire it in the air or say, ah, I'm aiming at someone dangerous. No, she aims at the three Chanel's and and pretends to fire. So that's yeah. <laughs> and I love that the the Chanel number three, instead of saying, you know, instead of just saying Boone, she has to specify that it's dead gay Boone. You know, so just, yeah. <laughs> and, and, right, and, and also the, the other Chanel's reaction when Chanel number one says, you know, oh, going to spend Thanksgiving at the, you know, and, yeah, Chanel number three is like, what if a ghost follows you because that's what's happening to her? And Hester's like, what if you die before you even go there? Um... Please stay away from me. That's holy crap. And <laughs> Denise is gonna tell some ghost stories. So she's no longer scared of the real thing. She's scared of the Candyman instead. And it, I mean, there is a certain like 
it is kind of silly that we we tell each other ghost stories just as, yeah big fan of ghost stories though and and yeah i think the stuff she says about the kappa demon the the ghost is accurate i've i've heard about it once or twice before so yeah and and you know of course chanel number 1 is going to be like really there's a there's one named after the sorority and Hester absolutely loved hearing a ghost story. And then there's the, the ghost story about the rolls of toilet paper. Just, wow. And, and you know, it's like, can you at least either stop telling ghost stories or stop telling ghost stories about bathrooms? You know, and Chanel number one, you know, she's going to go squat over a bowl under the stairs or something like that, which, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a solution, and, yeah, Boone and, and Chad is very funny, like, you feel so warm, I thought ghosts were, like, cold or vapor or stuff, um, Boone, have you forgot that you're, like, super gay? So, you know, we do now know Boone was the one who was, you know, t uh, who kidnapped Zede and, you know, prepared her favorite, uh, you know, I forget, was it her favorite dessert or snack or so something like that, you know. And, yeah, Boone claims that if he has sex with Zede, you know, it's like, go once you go black, you never go back. That refers to ghosts coming back having sex with black people, and you know, returning to life. Wow. And, <laughs> yeah, um, Denise gets in the in the bathroom and sees the two toilet rolls, and it's just like, I don't know what to choose, though, you know, it's not like, oh, no, I'm going to die. It's just, ah, mm, they're both such good choices, you know. Uh, how, how much time do I have to, to, to choose, you know, and... The, the the red devil is trying to grab her and like you know maybe like drown her in the toilet or something and she says no I just got my hair done <laughs> priorities and <laughs> yeah and she explains you know she's way she she needs to calm back down someone needs to tell a ghost story I'm definitely not going down those crazy overly dramatic stairs stair staircase you know, my, my heart wouldn't be able to take it, which is, of course, you know, that puts in our mind, you know, oh, the, the staircase might be dangerous, and by the end of the episode, Hester dies there, so. And I really love that the, so Hester tells a ghost story from the 50s, and in addition to the, the, the escaped mental patient who has a middle hook, a meat, meat hook, you have the song on the radio that's like cheery about like oh he chops people up it's just you know and people are being advised to stay away from the, that particular area and then you know she drives past the sign that says you know now entering that area just yeah that's really really funny and just the yeah you know and they and it's the thing about you know oh the reason that I kept flashing the lights and honking the horn was to warn you because there's someone in the back seat, you know, and the the killer in the back seat, and and not, you know, the warning not working, you know, that is an actual urban legend. So cool to see that worked into it, and yeah, and and Earl Grey is, you know with Zayde, and he, you know, he points out they haven't kissed before, so they kiss, and I appreciate, you know, yeah, that's, that's consent, you know, he, he verbally, you know, he, he brings up the idea of them kissing, and you can see, you know, to, you know, yeah, just look at her face, and, and, you know, her, her smile, and her eyes, clearly she's into it, you know, just, yeah. And the just you know, and he explains that it's it has to be perfect, it, you know, and and he has this long list of things that that he needs, including like 
you know, like chocolate, chocolate covered strawberries, and she's like, you have all that in your room? Player. And let's see. Yeah, and then, then Boone shows up, and he's trying to, to, you know, convince her that he's a ghost, and she and Grace are like the first two people with half a brain who's seen Boone, that, that aren't one of the killers, who's seen Boone since he was apparently killed, and both of them are like, you faked your death, like, obviously, you know, no, ghosts don't exist, that would be absurd, of course you faked your death, you know, he's in here, he tried to get me with the oldest line in the book, I think I'm, I'm, I must not have gotten the original, the, the, the correct edition of the book then because I've never run into I'm a ghost let's make love it is how I will be able to come back to life like just yeah and then it seems like he might die for real but then he does come back later wow and yeah, and and <laughs> Chanel, uh, hold on, huh? Not listed. Um, oh, there it is. There she is. Chanel number five is like, I don't care what any of you say. I'm leaving. You know, she's got the ridiculous amount of like, you know, bags and and such. And Chanel number one, no, oh, actually, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. And just everyone is completely okay with her leaving, which, you know, can backfire to make a, you know, if you're not, if people don't like you and you try to make a big dramatic thing like that, yeah, you might, you know. Let's see, and I really, and, and yeah, number five is in the, in the car, and, and driving, and I really appreciate that, like, you know, they know their audience, they, they, the, the, um, I guess it's a, is it a news reader, or is it a cop, anyway, you know, someone on the, on the radio, like, they realize some of the people who are gonna hear this, not too bright, um, okay, uh, okay, an APB, that stands for All Points Bulletin, okay, and, Yes, we know he's handsome, but the, the police would prefer you do not approach. Also, he it's it's possible that he's gay, which is just like, what, what does that have to do with anything? Like, just... And it's such a great... Because, like, people are obsessed with learning if, if you know, this or that person is, is actually, you know, who are... It, you know, yeah, are they gay or bi or straight or, you know, it's just like, why do you care? Like, basically the only reason that kind of thing should matter is if you're, you know, if, if it's someone you might be interested in and you got to find out if you're compatible, that kind of thing. But just, yeah, it, <laughs> even in the APBs, like, you know, don't approach him. He could be gay. He could be dangerous also. I think he might be gay. Just, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, so the urban legend that Hester told them is now happening to Chanel number five. And I really appreciate, you know, the, the, she kicks the guy, and he's like, I, I tried to warn you about, you know, and she's like, okay, that was super confusing, just, you know, which, you know, she has a point, and is like, there's no one there. I swear I saw someone. On the other hand, I have I am high on Adderall. I've been driving for thirty five hours straight. You know, just which is an excellent comp like. I I don't know if those exact if thirty five hours. That's but it possibly you know it's insane how hard. It's, um, what do y'all call them? Tr long. I know he's a trucker, but I feel like there's a specific term for like. Round, round trip trucker, I, whatever. I think you know what I mean. You know, yeah, it's ridiculous how hard they get pushed. The the kind of, you know, the the hours they have to work and just yeah. 
and Chad and Hester talk, and Hester, you know, she's back in her neck brace because the the you know it was it was it was so unbelievably painful but she bedazzled it so it fits in with her wardrobe he's the first person to notice it actually and you know she's like why would you possibly choose chanel over me and you know he goes over the reasons and he's she's chad radwell so they're of course very shallow and then you get the I've I've said it before I know but I love Chad like freaking out getting super hyped up about something you know she she's trying to be like you know to to give off this like vague warning threat kind of thing and he is just not I, I'm going to see if I can get the ex let's see um oh that's a little too far I guess this the the let's see yeah so he's done explaining and she says well I guess we'll just have to see how it goes bringing Chanel home for Thanksgiving and he says yeah I guess we will see as that's what's going to happen I guess we'll just have to wait and see yeah we will wait and see as Thanksgiving takes place in the future and therefore it hasn't happened yet. We'll see. Yep, sure will, as the arrow of time flows in one direction, causing future events to flow inexorably towards us. Just, I... So freaking funny. Just incredibly, you know. And, and then she blows him a kiss. And he, like, you know, at first he's like, <gasps> you know, oh no. And, and he catches it and throws it in the trash. Just, yeah, wow. And then, you know, Chanel number five is like, I can't believe that no one is freaked out or at least comforting me about how I was almost killed. And Chanel number one is like, well, the way you were almost killed was exactly what Hester described earlier. So try to get yourself killed in an original, fresh way. And the... Yeah, and, and, you know, Hester claims that, you know, she's now pregnant, so Chad has to choose her. And Chanel goes up to, to see Chad and is like, I can't believe you're still packing. Um, <clears throat> Chanel, packing matters to me, okay? That's why I, you know, I'm, I minored in packing, you know, just, wow. And the, the, yeah, you know, she, is it true about you and Hester? And, you know, for a second, he's like, what, how much does she know? You know, how much, what do I, you know, I, I really need to not incriminate myself here. And, you know, yeah, I, you know, we've had sex. Most of the ways we had sex wouldn't, you know, lead to her getting pregnant, if you know what I mean. Dude, you're trying to defend yourself and, and like, console your, your girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, because you've got another girl pregnant and you still can't help but brag about the way you have... Like, just, it's so second nature to him that just, yeah. And, yeah, he's, he's got to marry uh, Hester. And then, you know, she's like, you're going to pay, Chad the maybe the ultimate price and Ch Chanel one apologizes to three and five and three is like eh, sure whatever you know and five is like I don't know if I accept your apology way to make this about you and then we get this description of how at one point Chanel hacked her mom act Five's mom's email to try to convince Five that she was adopted and just wow. And you know we get one of the rare Chanel number three smiles at at that story. 
and you know it's like the so you know this is all about sisterhood so now that we are united let's plan how we're going to kill the fourth of the sisters just, you know and uh, you know we we have to get rid of her what like force her to leave or kill her obviously we have to kill her no that would make you the killer it would make her a killer not the killer I think when when discussing serial killing it is extremely important to to clarify whether this is a one-off kind of killing or if you are confessing to being the serial killer that's let's see, and <laughs> the cop wants them to to describe Boone so that they can draw a sketch Like at this point, it really it, it is clear he has no idea what he's doing. Uh, he's he's winging it. He is he's been he's watched a bunch of movies and TV shows about cops, and he's like sketch artist. Haven't done that yet. I haven't done a sketch artist yet. I've always wanted to say just describe the suspect. You know what he looks like. It's it's Boone. We all you know he's been at he's been at the school for a while. It's just amazing, and and then we meet Paul Cameron from Dope, and the the <laughs> he is the best in his field. He got a callback from Sci-Fi for that show where they run around in, with night vision goggles, and and the you know he explains that if Boone comes back, it is imperative that you do not have sex with him. Just, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, Dean Munch explains to, to you know, t tells the cop, it's, you know, I, I will work hard to make sure that people know that not only did we sleep together, but you asked in baby talk if, if I would nurse you. And his face is like, yeah. I, I did. That's true. And yeah, and and you know, Dean Munch, you know, tells them tells Zayde and Grace about the the boy baby, and yeah, it does seem a lot. It well, actually, yeah, by the end of the episode, it has been confirmed, at least to the audience, that Boone must have been the boy baby. And the idea that, you know, oh, she was already dead, but she let out this this death groan so powerful that she pushed out a baby from the just... Yeah. A man wrote this. That is not... I, I, no, no woman who's ever actually, like, given birth would even remote... Like, even, even as a joke, probably would not think that there's any way that... I'm not saying it's not a funny joke. No, seriously, that was wow. That's 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 an image, and yeah. So Boone, the Red Devil, and Gigi meet up, and you know, it's the, I I appreciate how long they're they're withholding. So let's see the 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 entire season. Let's see. The the entire season is thirteen episodes. This was episode nine. We still do not know who the the third of the killers is. Like this, yeah. But it does sound like it might be a twenty year old woman and the other of the babies because you know the the Gigi says your let's see your brother's was some something you know so yeah and the yeah i i really really like when you know Gigi says boom you are the weakest link and is, are you about to sing? Because all I hear is me, 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 me. 
and we get some of his background, which I quite appreciate, and just, wow, that is some really messed up stuff, and again, you know, really points out the problems with the, the system in America, and how it takes care of the people who have nothing else to rely on, and you know, Red Devil, it looks like, is about to stab Gigi, but instead stabs Boone. And I like how, you know, we, we heard that they're gonna, that the, the three Chanel's are gonna try to, you know, get rid of Hester. So when, when they're like, please have some food, we got it just for you. You know, we're like, oh, it's poison, but then they just keep giving, you know, they... Here, have some sushi, have some cheese, have, you know, have some, have some champagne that has, like, cigarette kind of flavoring, because that's the reason people love cigarettes, the flavor, you know, just... <laughs> and then, you know, so, so yeah, it's not, they're not trying to poison her, they're just trying to prove that she's not pregnant, you know, she wouldn't be eating and drinking those things if she was actually pregnant, and she's like, well, I didn't even know that that is supposed to have that effect, and then one of them is like, you're not leaving until you pee on all of these sticks, and they have, you know, it's just, and, and, like, she, she smiles, and, it, like, for a second I thought they were gonna do, like, some line about, oh, I love peeing on sticks, or some, something, but no, she, she confesses that she was lying, but Sh Chad bought the, the airline ticket, the, the flight to, plane ticket, so, you know, and, and they're gonna have plenty of opportunities for her to become pregnant. Thanksgiving. Let's see, and yeah, then she's like, "I'm gonna kill you, Hester," and then she runs out. I'm so sorry about the, you know, and ah, oh, do you really mean that? No, and push, you know, it was just so that Hester would come up, because like hypothetically, for for one thing, Chanel wanted to make to have as many steps that Hester could fall down as at, at, at all possible in order to ensure that she would yeah that it would be fatal but also you know if you just shouted I'm gonna kill you and then you start running after someone on a staircase you know who, who are headed headed down a staircase they might get a little suspicious you know and so yeah and I don't think it's an accident that they made sure to get her back in the neck brace before her neck didn't brace quite enough and it broke when she landed. Like, I really admire Ryan Murphy's ability to make these really, really uncomfortable jokes. It's just, you know, because you see, because it's not, you know, it... Like, it's not the only way she could die falling downstairs, but the the sound design, editing, and such make it clear she died of a broken heart. I mean, neck. And... <laughs> that's just, that's so, so, so inappropriate, and I love it. And, yeah, then, you know, Chanel says, let's stuff her in the meat locker, and... Yeah, so just really, just absolutely loved yet another episode, and I'm going to miss Boone. Uh, I guess it's possible we'll get, like, flashback or something. I really, I gotta say, I did not, I would not have guessed that Nick Jonas could, like, act. Like, I, I don't have a problem with the Jonas Brothers, you know, it's... I'm not the target demographic, but no, he he really really nailed it in in each of these episodes. Just yeah, incredibly funny. I I'd like to see him in more stuff. Um, let's 
see. Yeah, okay. It, it isn't the first time he acts, I see, according to IMDB. But, but yeah, um, I think that is everything that I... Right, I appreciate that when, you know, when Zayde says that it's awful that Earl Grey died, she makes sure to mention, uh, you know, his sexy accent. Just, yeah, completely gratuitous. But, uh, yeah. I'm really gonna miss Hester. Uh, I, yeah. Again, may maybe they'll find some way to, to bring back she really is, uh, you know, I've said it before, I, I really love Leia Michelle. I, I think she's done such fantastic, like, yeah, she's, she's so much fun to, to watch in, in stuff. So, yeah. Um, that is... Yeah, I, I quite appreciate it. I I liked, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis when, when she, like, when when Grace is saying, you know, you have blood on your hands and just her fit. Just, yeah, she's she's so good. She's always so freaking good. She's been acting for longer than I've been alive. She's still doing it. It's awesome. Just always love seeing her in, in stuff. And, and I really love that here she's this really unpleasant character when she was, like, pure innocence in the original Halloween, which, you know, in addition to starting her career in, in horror, also started her career in general, you know, so so just, yeah, really cool to... to seriously, at some point, try watching that movie and then right after putting on an episode of the, or just a scene of hers like it's just it's night and day like you know you can you can see that it's the same actress but just completely different uh, yeah i think that is yeah i mean i know i already said it but i really really liked seeing Chanel number three with Boone and terrified of Boone. There were a lot of times this episode where she like put her hands on the the ear muffs, I guess. Right, because the the yeah, because there was that story about how she drove one guy crazy. Well, he felt that she had driven him crazy about with with the ears, and if anyone ever saw her ears he would cut them off or some, something like that, you know, some, some kind of violent threat. So I guess she's thinking back to that. Yeah. Anyway, um, yes. So next episode should be next week, possibly also Thursday. And I'm going to try to do a movie before this week is out. So hope to catch you then. Bye.